The Cheval Fugitive, a story of ambition, betrayal, didgeridoos, and general disappointment. The Cheval nameplate hails from an alternative automotive reality, known as Australia. In the infamous land down under, things are very much upside down. The marsupials will kickbox you, televised wrestling is real, it's just called rugby. The spiders are hamster-sized, and about 80% of the country is reserved for various demon creatures. Now, Cheval got its start as a carriage builder at the turn of the century, and by the end of the 40s, they were making things that went vroom. The very first commercially successful Chevals were subsidized by their new American owners at De Classe. And while it was true that De Classe was Cheval's parent company, it didn't matter what the Yankees across the sea suggested. For the same reason that you can't put a polar bear in the tropics, most of the world's imports couldn't survive Australian roads. But also, the Australians just sorta of did whatever they wanted. Hey Australia, can we interest you in a nice, shiny, brand new pickup truck? No, we just use cars! Okay, okay. How about constructing a hybrid? Alright. But I bet I pick And that brings us to this. Cheval decidedly named its flagship vehicle after the very first Australian settlers. Naturally then, the Fugitive became the go-to option for everyone and their mom. This was because there were two major choices for the average Australian family who wanted something homemade. Cheval or Vapid. This all meant that the Fugitive was offered in various trim packages and utility formats like station wagons, vans, and of course, the infamous ute. After years of experimenting with rebadged imports, De Classe, like a Vinewood agent convincing an inspiring actor they'd make it big in America, seduced Cheval into going all in and bringing the Fugitive to North American shores as a full release. Now on paper, the Fugitive should have hit it big in the US of A. A full-size performance sedan would have swept the people off their feet, yet De Classe's pathetic word-of-mouth marketing and a steep MSRP killed the car near instantaneously. It almost felt like internal sabotage. Not just for the Fugitive, but Cheval entirely. To make matters worse, Vapid had mopped up nearly every police contract in the country, which meant the Fugitive wouldn't even see half the police usage it had back home. Despite its commercial failure, the sports saloon still managed to scoop up a few government contracts here and there, as well as some law enforcement deals. And much like the Stanier, the retired fleet vehicles have trickled into LS traffic, for a fraction of their sticker price no less. The stately looking sedan blends simplicity with aggression. Bolstered fender flares and angled intakes that join clean curves and lines straighter than a ruler's edge. And while the looks may imply the car takes no prisoners, its roomy interior begs to differ, offering plenty of room. Just whether or not those prisoners occupy the back seat or the spacious trunk is up to what you do for a living. And here's the interior. Any more observations and we'll have put more work in than Cheval did. Although it is worth pointing out that the lack of digital displays and obtrusive iFruit tablets reminds us that Cheval never planned on distracting you from the reality of driving. They wanted you to embrace it. Which of course means that the fugitive signature growl emanates from a hearty V- Oh. <sighs> never mind. The fugitive may come off as a generic American four-door to the untrained eye, but to those who know, no. This Aussie sedan packs a wallop for its class, effortlessly competing with cars worth twice the price. It's no wonder either, considering the Fugitive is just the next iteration of a racing heritage running generations deep. While the Fugitive might have landed with a thud here in North America, the moniker retains a near-biblical significance at home. Where performance is concerned, the car is... well, weighty. When behind the wheel of a Fugitive, the goal is to throw said weight around the track as efficiently as possible. The car holds a decent straight line speed and holds onto those corners like a vice. Though if you aren't careful, the oversteer will let loose like an emu on bath salts. Even with Cheval ceasing all domestic operations, the legend refuses to die, remaining a cultural icon and, much like everything else in the outback, a vicious killer. <laughs>